Is just kind of hanging out right there. Uh. We just broke down in the middle of traffic. Gas like forever. Gas lane forever, man. Good morning. It's 6:30 a.m. So early enough, and we have lots to do on the El Camino before we hit the road. Two hours to Tucson. Jen's gonna follow me. Finally got these two up. Mr. Gus, come on, buddy. Yeah, you ready? Get the big stretches out. These wipers are not gonna work. See, they're a little too tall. And this arm doesn't slip back under the windshield like it's supposed to. Of course, the wipers don't work anyway, which is no big deal unless it rains. And look at that, it's just not plugged in. Oh yeah. I just gotta find some good wipers that fit properly. Oh, and they park too. Oh, and check that out. What I thought was the lower rad hose is definitely the water pump. Well, luckily we did pick one of those up as a backup. Here's what the top looks like. Definitely a newer pump, but I guess their only option at this point is pouring a stop leak in there because we don't have enough time this morning to do that. I mean, that stop leak's not great to throw inside an engine. It can clog things up. Guaranteed to seal and stop leaks plus. Guaranteed. Oh, well, there's the sludge. It's a two-part system. The one side's got some fibrous black sludge and the other side's got some system conditioner. I'm gonna take the rad cap, uh, wait, it's just cracked right off anyway. Take the rad cap, seal off so it doesn't build pressure and, and blow out a bunch. Throw this air cleaner on now. Oh, we have no air filter. As I'm putting this battery hole down in, I'm thinking of the mandatory items we're gonna need to go down the drag strip if they even allow this piece of junk. And we're not gonna peel out on there with leaky coolant. So let's Got those seat belts installed. Luckily, you had them in with the rest of the parts. And I mean, just look how crispy this thing is. Like it's nice with the, the rust-free cars out here. Well, reduced rust, but this is a crispy interior. Stuff. We're gonna hit the road now. Last thing I wanna do before getting out of town is check that differential oil since you saw we had a pretty big leak. And then we'll just see how it goes. Luckily, we got a chase car though with these two. Curves like a kitten. Easy finding the proper air filter for this because it says right on the bottom 82 Regal 231. What's that, the, the 3.8, right? Still don't even know what engine this is. We'll have to look through that guy's paperwork later or, uh, you know, check some engine numbers at some point. Now, I was considering doing an oil change on it, guys. Got the oil and filter, heavy duty diesel Rotella. It's the best ever. Love it. High zinc content. Uh, but I think we're going to go ahead. You guys saw how clean the oil was. So we're going to go ahead and drain a quart out of that and then add uh, probably about three quarter of that bottle of mystery marble oil in it and try to loosen up the, uh, free up those lifters or, you know, it's probably a cam. Who, who knows? But uh, add another arm in there. Oh yeah, that's a... All right, call that about a quart. And then we'll replace that one quart with a bottle of Mystery Marvel. Let it work, it's magic. Either gonna be the best thing we did or the worst thing we did. Okay, sometimes cleaning deposits in an engine can be a problem. I'm hoping we'll run for an hour or two with this and then probably change the oil down in Tucson. Of course, we could try filling the crankcase half full of diesel and that would clean things up, but trying to play it safe for now. So I'm out back digging through the dumpster looking for a gallon container because there's none up front in the trash cans. And look what was sitting behind. A five lug spare. I wonder if that'll fit. That's flat, but you know, we have a, a spare trail tire. Yeah, it looks like that might work. She's a little crusty, rusty, but better than no spare rim. And we'll keep that as an extra quart under the hood in our little storage box. Actually, let's get rid of the rip off there. And we'll find somewhere else for it. Let's see how this rear bumper holds up. Somebody mentioned a great point about these bumper jacks in the first video. Never take your hand off the handle. Like, don't leave it in there, because if it kicks out or whatever, this thing's gonna whoo, go flying, hit somebody in the face. Hey, Jen, can you roll me that wheel over from the other side? Let's see if it fits on here. Oh yeah, perfect fit. So we'll put our spare 14 inch trailer tire on here that's in good shape at some point. And last but not least is checking this rear differential, because you can see we got a pretty good drip right there, and that's how much is leaked. There it goes. Oh, 
Well, it doesn't smell burnt. That's good. Let's see what we're at in here. Oh. We got flu, but it's over an inch down. Almost there, babe. I had this sitting out in the sun for a little bit. Top are off, we'll just have to keep an eye on this gear oil throughout the trip. I right, snugged it down and we'll be checking back on this. Need a new pinion seal. Uh, last stop before we leave town, stopped over at Tire Zone. Gonna mount this on that spare uh, rim that we have. Got my man Jose over here with the tire machine. Hopefully this rim is uh, good, not completely rusted inside. Yes, this rim's not too bad. Probably hit it with a quick wire wheel and then uh, maybe, maybe bead seal it, good to go. This is cheap insurance because if we get a flat out there, I know we're not gonna be able to find a, a 14 anywhere, you know? They seem to be a hard tire to find. Cool, cool. Thanks so much, Jose. Welcome, I'll welcome see you. <laughs> Safety first. And we have officially made it onto the freeway. 126 miles to go. It's a mighty smooth ride, I might add. Definitely a good feeling having Jen behind me as a chase car. Suppose we'll stop about 50 miles, check that water leaks. I got no temp gauge, it's just the over temp light. Who knows if that works? And, uh, and check that differential leak. Got enough power for passing. Oh yeah. It's a lot of water to farm out here. It's about them, that's what the field would look like. About 70 miles, gonna stop, check some fluids, fill her up, see what the fuel mileage is at. Um, at the Picacho Peak Plaza. Oh, I didn't diesel that time. Just calculated 71 GPS miles. Gonna fill her back up to the identical spot. Yeah, 4.04 gallons. Which comes out to 17 and a half miles of the gallon. Not too bad. I guess it makes sense with the fact that our displacement is down with the, with the valve train issues. Well, let's check on that coolant leak. Oh, well, that's not good. Yeah, she she boiled over a little bit. Yeah. Mm. That's what happens when the system's not pressurized. So maybe we'll put that new cap on. Jen said there was some smoke coming out of the tailpipe, probably burning oil. Let's see where we're at on that. Just below the fuel, uh, full mark. So far, no problems with vapor lock. You can see that fuel filter, it's real crowded up. Uh, we might have to replace that at some point. As I mentioned in previous videos, I, I don't really like putting plastic ones under the hood because it gets really hot under here and God forbid it's a fire, that thing will melt in a heartbeat. But then again, so would a, a hose. Of course, it's usually a steel line under here. And uh, a, a guy I met at uh, O'Reilly's the other day, he brought up a good point. He's like, man, you got too much fuel hose running under the hood. It's gonna cause the fuel to get really hot as you're going down the road. So I, I guess that's a valid point. But then again, when you consider the fact that the fuel pump's mounted on the, <laughs> the 200 degree uh, engine block, I'm sure it's pretty hot by the time it gets up there anyway on this this uh, steel line. Let's take a peek at that differential leak and oh, nothing leaked at all on the ground. We've been sitting here for about 10 minutes too. So, and it's not blowing down the back either. I guess that problem fixed itself. You know, I was thinking in the heat of it, I did forget to check the vent when we were under there earlier. And we'll have to look into that later. Oh, I just laid in gum. That's great. You know, I can't, why, why do people throw gum on the ground? It's got a sticky butt. Look at that. You know, freaking people throwing gum on the ground. Getting some sun protection. I love it, it's perfect. <laughs> Definitely grabbing this one. It's only 12 bucks. I'm guessing right behind this plaza is the Picacho Peak. I'll have to look up the right way to say that. But wow, that is spectacular. We're gonna top her off and put that new rad cap on, let her build up some pressure. Okay, I'll be pressurized. The bubs go pee? And poo. Oh, good boy. Good boy. All right, let's uh, make it there. We got less than an hour to Tucson. Smokes 
guys. We made it. Tucson Dragway right there. We'll have to pull over and check our cooling system situation real quick though, huh? See if we're dumping coolant on the ground. And she did not boil over at all. Oh, you need that pressure in there when it's hot. Oh, yeah, but never mind. The leak is, is spewing out now with all the pressure. Is this your first grass of the trip? You're not even that excited. That sucks. I wish we had more time to do the pump, but yeah, it's, it's leaking 80 freeze again real bad. Jen's beautiful artwork. And there's my slop job. Uh-oh, mommy got paint all over you. Look at that. Oh, no. Let's see how much pressure we got in the system. Oh yeah, still quite a bit. We'll leave all that pressure and let it go a little bit longer. I used a Gatorade bottle to redo that broken overflow bottle because that was full of coolant. Well, I guess let's go pull her on in. I'll have to get those wipers fixed up today at some point. I was thinking maybe we'll just rebuild the old ones. What a temperature difference down here in Tucson. It feels like it's 55 degrees out, wind blowing in my face. Unfortunately, we arrived too late for the tech inspection, although it wouldn't matter anyway since we're leaking cold, but we're gonna roll on through here and then go check out the races. I guess we just had a lot going against us today and uh, you know, sometimes it don't work out. But we made it. Well, all the track officials we were talking to don't really seem to have a, a grip on the organization here, so we just, just kind of pulled up, parked it right here, and we're gonna go find out what's going on. Have a good time. There's a bar over there too, look at that. determine if it's actually worth less than three thousand dollars station the number one ranked best-selling independent beer in arizona hey, dennis, my man man giant. dennis over here Thanks. hooking Thank us you. up heck yeah and if you need more yeah. gus is like bring me back to the grass what is this place it's all concrete well all tarmac here is he a puggle part pugger she is pug and staffy oh yeah oh. look at that Okay, so you. Excited. He's Beautiful. On a it's okay. It's official. All right, it's guys. It's officially <laughs> a going to town rig by Derek. That so happened. it's it, it's now worth what thousand dollars more? Uh, <laughs> like twelve bucks. Let's be honest. <laughs> Check out that rainbow. It's all right. We got a rental car tomorrow. Okay. Freiburg decided to go down. Yeah, yeah, it just went up there, right? It's a thirsty pub there. Last car off the track. Did they clear you guys out then with the rain, right? Just for now, yeah. Yeah. Sure I'll be back. yeah. Clear skies in the distance, right? Well, it started raining and they shut down drag racing for the night. Close this hood. You got to push forward a little bit. There you go. And then push forward, pull down. There you go. And then watch your hands. Oh, that was scary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we're gonna. I think we're gonna camp here tonight. Is that the plan? Mm -hmm. We had to close the hood because people keep coming up and they're like, ex they look all excited to see something under the hood, and there's just nothing. <laughs> they're like, it's, oh, it's like, oh, so this looks pretty hacked anything. together. <laughs> Look at that, sun's back out for a beautiful evening. But they did call racing for the night. I'm you know, his oh, original old man book. Stuff. Yeah, his original. This whole thing's full of everything on the car. Oh, that's I even cool, go through. Yeah. Yeah. This one's 82 right there. Front tires, 100 bucks. Wow. You sure you want my scribble on that? Yeah, right here on the end. Man. Right there? Yep. The man putting the 
the show on, the reason, he, you know, he dragged no nonsense know how out here. <laughs> we didn't make it in the race, but hey, that makes it worth it. Nice, thanks Thank for being you. here. Thanks so much. Guys. It's just been a killer night hanging out here, and they got a raging bonfire going. I found some two and a half gallon corn oil containers. Uh, two of them, so we got five gallons of water for getting this thing wherever we got to. We're probably gonna end up camping here tonight. You, you uh, what, what do you think? You want to camp here tonight or what? Yeah, she's ready for a nap. So I think we're gonna just kind of post up right here and uh, call it a night. The double N K H L Camino. Oh, look at this! I heard some rustling down here. And what did you do? Hey, where are you going? Gus just ripped up my emergency stash of tinfoil that I just rolled up neatly, and somehow he got it off the dash. I'll just uh, John Hancock this guy. There you go. There it is. Good luck charm getting home. All right. Back here, my man. Welcome to the jungle. We're going to bed. Getting in our tent here. Sleepy time. Last night was a darn blast, and huge shout out to Freiburger for putting on the duct tape drags event. If you guys hadn't been to that before, check it out next year. Good time for sure, great crowd of people. Uh, maybe we'll get to actually run a car next year, who knows. So from here, we might be taking one of a few different paths. Uh, not entirely in love with this car, however, we are gonna be committed to it later today. We gotta return a rental car this evening back in Phoenix. So this morning, we're gonna hang out in Tucson, go check out Saguaro National Park, and then I'll try and back with this, let you know what happens. I did put it up for sale, see if we get maybe a hit hit or two on it and get something different. But if not, we'll address the water pump, figure out the valve train issues, uh, and you know, get her, get her ready for the trip home. Saguaro National Park. What shall we be looking for? Let's see a Gila Monster, Desert Tortoise. A, a Gila Monster? Javelina. What's a Gila Monster? Oh, some kind of lizard. Pine cones. This place is an eight mile one way loop. So once you turn down the road, you are committed. Gus, what you looking at out there? I don't care about no cacti. When are we going to find some grass? Luscious Kansas grass. This is what I want. Check out this, this view used to look like that had that many more cactuses but a or cacti but in 1937 a cold front came through and wiped out a bunch and so that's what it looked like in 1960 and then 1985 and now so unfortunately the changing weather has knocked out these aging giants once the most spectacular cactus forest in arizona no more start heading back toward Apache Junction. Jen's over in the fries doing a little shopping and I'm just over here cleaning out the, the fuel filter. You take one side off and then swish that, that gas around and that way get, get the heavy sediment out of it. Thinking maybe we'll bolt the new fuel pump in too real quick because I think most of this is just rubber bits from that pump. And look at that, filter's like new. Luckily this is a real easy pump to replace. Unless of course this is all you have for getting the flare nut off, which I had a flare nut wrench because I just rounded that off a little bit. Let's try some vice grips. Need some better tools. Oh look though, now we're committed because it's leaking, leaking gas. Third tool was the charm. Used this, this uh, fresh set of channel locks and with the harder teeth on, they were able to bite into the steel. These, these uh, Pittsburgh vice grip knockoffs are just too soft. It's garbage. Yeah, buddy. 
Side by side comparison, they look the same. Let's crack her open. All right, maybe we'll just do that later. No, we'll keep going. There it goes. show you guys that shot diaphragm in here. So there's a look at the two one-way valves that make this thing work properly, and this is the diaphragm. I expected this one to be a lot more deteriorated. It's really not too bad, but yeah, there's, there's dry rot and cracking in there. So I assume that's where all the rubber was coming from, or, you know, the, the lines of this car are really dirty. So let's bolt the new pump in, and then we'll check the filter later down the road. And so the trickier part of this installation is dealing with the fuel pump push rod. You see, mine has fallen down. It's kind of wedged can't push it back in. If you're lucky, it'll just stay up there. You drop a new pump in. But I'm gonna take that base cover off now. And we can see that cover off. There's the a look at the rod. It's kind of just chilling. Pop that out. And there's a look at it. So what you're gonna wanna do is put some grease on this so it stays in place. But I think all I probably have is Vaseline right now. Turns out I don't have any. So maybe we have an overstock of grease in here we can tap. You know, snack, grab a little bit from the opportunity to see what these look like anyway. I don't think I'd call that an overstock, but there is a little bit, probably not enough. Ran into the fries and got some. Now, before we coat this rod in it to hold it in the block, I am going to slide it back in and then have Jen bump the engine over. Because what we're trying to do is get the rod to its shortest position. Uh, since this rod's on the cam, it's an eccentric lobe. We want, you know, it just makes it easier to install usually. Uh, so, Go ahead and uh, I'm gonna just hold my finger on here guys, you know real real carefully go ahead and just blip the throttle Again 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 All right beautiful. Thanks. So as you can see it was already in its shortest position Which you know if I replaced these every day I would have known that by looking at it, but thanks, baby. That's it. That's all you needed Easy peasy. Okay. We'll be out of here in no time. Got her slopped up with some petroleum jelly. And geez, with the heat out of here, I don't know if this is going to work. Probably a thicker, high temp grease would be better. But let's see if it holds it into place. If not, I'm sure we could still get it in there. All right. No, it's not holding it. <laughs> Jen happens to be eating cheese over here, and that gave me a good idea. Give me a little sliver of that. <laughs> You're going to use cheese to fix the car? How about that little piece right here? This, this little thing hanging off there. <laughs> oh, cheese never hurt an engine. There it is. Ha <laughs> ha, sweet. Hopefully that holds. Vaseline still comes in handy for other stuff. So I'm glad we grabbed it. We can hold the gasket into place. And then go ahead, drop that pump into place. Bolt her in. With that all together, let's flow test this, see what it looks like. Go ahead, baby, crank it. And the crud comes out of there. Oh yeah. And there comes more crud. So maybe that was just all in the lines. All right. Yeah, well, that's some more flushing of the line there. Just to show you, this is the stuff that was coming out of the lines the first time. It's like a black, almost rubbery sludge or something, grime. But what came out that time is definitely rust flakes. However, that's probably due to me rebending uh, the hard line. I was tweaking it to make it work on that pump. So that's, uh, it broke it loose in the walls and it came out. Just check the rest of the fluids. The rear diff seems to be holding on to its gear oil for now. Only a small drip. Uh, do a quick spill and fill on the oil. And we'll hit the road. Hopefully the water pump makes it the rest of the day and we can address that tomorrow. Because you know what? I'm ready to get back to vacation. Oh, red ants. You guys are probably wondering why I'm even changing oil on such a beat motor. And mostly just because. And two, I want to uh, find out what's inside, how much you know, metal is inside of this. And also when you don't know how old the filter is, I always worry about them coming apart inside and clogging up the system. Or this could be clogged for all I know too. See the new one's a little bit shorter, not a big deal. I don't know if the camera shows it, but there's a ton of sparkly flakes in that oil. Copper looking bearing material. I, I think it's safe to say this motor is going to be wiped out. Which with those wiped cam lobes, it's probably got metal, steel metal floating through the entire engine. We'll find out later when we cut this open, but not looking good. Throw some ZDDP out of them in there, help out with the flat tappets. Well, bad news, guys, I was just double checking for any fuel leaks since we had those off. It's very important with fuel and brake, and our water pump is just shot now. It's, it's pissing out. I gotta clean this up. We're gonna have to do that before we leave town. It's gotten progressively worse, but I did have a fuel leak down there, a very slip trip, and thank God I was able to 
snug that down uh, a scotch tighter jammer on there and the, now the flare is, is not leaking. Now always, always, always check with gas. I mean, I would have smelled that fuel drip going down the road right away, but yeah, good thing I checked that. Well, this is what you get for not doing the right thing the first time. Now we get to stay in Tucson and do a water pump. Picked a nice shady spot next to the parts store in case the pump is wrong that we got. Could always be worse, right? Could be worse. Definitely could be worse. We got beautiful mountains. Look at that. I mean, come on. Gus is over there, super content. Jen's got her bug spray. Did you check the dumpster yet? I did not look in the dumpster yet. Uh, yeah, there's some decent stuff in there. Yeah, see some jugs and boxes. Great, the one bowl of bottoms and stuff in the rest came out my hand, which was freaking awesome. It's heavy, watch out. Mm -hmm. All right. Hot, 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 hot. Well, 15 minutes later, we got to pump out. I feel like we should have just done this another night, but you know, I was really avoiding uh, doing. Oh, making a mess. Hot though. Hot, 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 hot. Uh, I was avoiding doing this because the pump has to come out to do the cam. So the, the cam's. Right behind the timing cover here. Now all we gotta do is pull the valve covers, intake, lifters and rockers out and all that and the front pulley and then slide the cam out. We'll take the radiator out too, I suppose. But you know, we're I'd say we're a tenth of the way there now. But anyway, let's get this together. Get back to Apache Junction. Quick side-by-side -side comparison, and it looks to be identical. We just gotta swap this nipple over. You can see on the bottom, this is the weep hole that was leaking. So so when that starts leaking, that means that the cooling pressure in the system has pushed past these seals and it's trickling out. Look how much it takes to, to loosen this. If you can loosen it, with, you see, see that? Look at this. Watch, one, two, three. I have no torque. I, could, I mean, couldn't do it with your fingers, but that's that's really loose. Snuggle down, good to go. Not gonna mess with the thermostat since we haven't had a problem overheating, but definitely gonna go get a set of belts because these are you know real dry and, and We'll keep them as spares, but broken belt on the road, never a fun time. Jen was digging through the paperwork trying to find out what engine might be in here, and she did find this JD in stock 1990 CH350 with a 274 cam. No, well, I don't know, board 30 over, crank is ground to 10, 10, 10, number one aft, eight, AFT, and then uh, this says 80. Engine is 80 black 350. So I think it's safe to say it's a 350 and it's definitely not from the 70s. And I kind of been avoiding in trying to find the engine casting numbers because you know, I hate trying to, I don't know, it's never, like they should put like a placard right on the front of these. Why do they bury them so far in the back? We got 14010207. For a <clears throat> block casting number. Man, this pop socket sucks. Hey, I'm gonna read you off the. Uh... In fact, I need a wire brush or something to clean this one. And our front ID is V0204TDW with uh, other bottom. Uh, AF141945. She's ready to slap back together. Luckily, they had the belt in stock. Master Pros, but made in USA. Uh, seems pretty good quality. Same quality as his gates. And you, know, you can see these were just uh, kind of kind of crispy. Otherwise, uh, always make sure to coat your bolts that are through holes. You know, instead of a blind hole like these ones are, just one lower one is a, a through hole. Coat those in Teflon or silicone. And make sure to silicone or use some kind of sealant on your your uh, gaskets here too, whatever tickles your fancy, because uh, otherwise they probably will leak again. Jen has made us a delicious lunch. Cheers. That's on the road for you. All right, got her all back together, filling up with concentrate, and then top it off with water. Really should use distilled water, but that'll be fine. And we're on the road back to Phoenix to drop the car. Good stuff, that took what, I don't know. 20 minutes, right, baby? How long? I'm joking. I took, how long did it actually take? I don't know, like 45 minutes? Wasn't bad. We got her done. Should have done it earlier, but we're done now. <laughs> Thanks, baby.
good looking. What you doing out here in the desert all by yourself? Can you give me a ride? Oh, uh, yeah, I can take you. I gotta make a couple detours before heading back into town, though. Don't mind the mess. <laughs> Mighty, look at you. Oh, look at that pooch you got. How's you, what brings you out here, anyway? Here. Oh, yeah, you gotta grab the door. <laughs> Guys, we made it to Phoenix, just coming off the highway. Got a horrible belt squeal, and I thought it's, I put those new belts on there, maybe just one, uh, needed to get tightened up, but check this out. See, it's just slipping on there. You guys don't even have to see that. All right, here's top end. So the, the compressor is not engaged, but the bearing on here actually went bad, is what happened. Took the belt off, tip tied it out of the way, good to go. Well, we must be gluttons for punishment because we've done it again. We returned a perfectly good rental car, and now, this is our new home. Well, we checked into a Motel 6, and now the moment of truth. We're going to see if these door locks work. I mean, we haven't tried them at all on the trip. Let's see. Oh! <gasps> oh! I think it Dude. worked. Nice. And the driver's side locks and unlocks. Look at that. This does lock. Fortunately, it's not attached to anything, so it doesn't really matter. But we'll, we'll get that rod fixed up, and we'll have a locking uh, cap, too. Come see our room. It smells like smoke, and, but it's pet friendly, right, Gus? Well, we didn't really mention him. <laughs> no, I, I did. I told him. And they put carpets in. It doesn't make any sense to me. It's perfect place for just dirt and everything to soak in. Plus, if he happens to pee on the floor, well, you know, he does easy, pee on easy the clean floor. up. He's a perfect dog. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you just cocked him. Speaking of the keys, I wonder if any of you guys would recognize this from the 70s or 80s whenever they had them, but American Express driver security plan was, was on here, and unfortunately I sat on my pocket and broke it. You know, it survived all those years without that. And then, uh, deposit in any mailbox, driver security plan, P.O. box, blah, 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 Raleigh, North Carolina, and there's the registration number. Sorry, guys, but I can't see that. Return postage guaranteed. So, I mean, it's... Guaranteed to not ever be returned to me, but you know, maybe I'll uh, give them a call and see if they still are this if I can switch switch it over because I do have an American Express What are you doing out here in your Look towel? Dirt got in here from doing the donuts. <gasps> it's so bad. Oh my god My suitcase everything full of dust Great idea. Go do donuts. I haven't even get in there. Late night Mexican over at Filberto's 24 hour Mexican food. Delicious. We stopped in over at Furia Musical. Great little joint. And how good was Filberto's? That was incredible Mexican food, especially for being a 24 hour franchise. Chris and I have stayed in enough, enough campgrounds that he thinks that just putting a couple of jugs of water and trash on the ground will mark his parking spot. Didn't want to lose our princess parking in front of the room, but yeah, she's burning some oil as it, as it gets hot out of that right side tailpipe. All right, we're stopping in the quick quack car wash to do the vacuuming. This place is incredible. They give you free clean towels, get a blow wand, and uh, so all these are already on. Essential vacuum just up against the rubber. Really good suction. You gotta watch what you might suck up by mistake with essential vacuum though.
get all those paint flakes the best we could, but uh, don't want to overstay our visit here because it's actually free of charge vacuums with the purchase of a car wash, but we asked them, they're like, no, no, you're totally fine just using them. So huge five star for this place. I mean, we gladly would have done the car wash, but didn't want to get absolutely soaked going through with this thing. The guy in the room next to us flying out today, hooked us up with some free Modellas. They won't go to waste. Shells? Pistachio. Oh, pistachio shells. Oh, that's okay. We'll get you that. We're able to solve this wiper saga by taking the new wiper apart and taking the, the rubber off of it, the membrane. And now, check it out. Rebuilt the old ones so that they are low profile and they slip under the windshield, just barely. Uh, but I bet you they, I think they used to sell just the wiper material. No, no places. Everybody asks, is like, do you have rolls of the wiper material? They're like, no, nah, we don't, we don't carry that. Do you just buy the whole thing now? It's, it's so wasteful, you know, old stuff used to be all rebuildable. And I mean, these wipers are probably, I don't know, 30 years old and still work good. I mean, don't get me wrong. The newer wipers have much better action on them with the, the extra linkage. They're just too tall. You know, these ones don't have as many links. And oh, <laughs> look at that. That's what the uh, Arizona <laughs> heat and sun does to rubber. Oh, <laughs> we got new things coming to life. The key in ignition buzzer just started working. There it is. Oh, this is why, I mean, the cap seemed like a good idea, but after all of our crud is in there, I can't find anything. I'm gonna put the vapor lock filter on today because we're having an issue with that. We got uh, rid of the plastic filter. You see no sediment or anything. And I got in there, we added a T, a little bit different this time. And we ran that down this way and put the filter on the inlet side um, so so before the pump and a lot of people say you know don't do that because a filter paper filter could restrict the flow to the pump but i think it should be all right and uh that we you know we got that third nipple on here so now essentially it's going to be pumping fuel up and then sending a very small trickle back in through there of hot fuel check it out here's a nice uh, way to clamp hoses with vice grips you take two wrenches and they uh get it off there we go there go the wrenches but that way you never want a vice grip right on the hose unless you're going kinking the hose and just going real soft to hold it in place going like this with two wrenches a lot easier on the hose since we are still having dieseling when we shut the uh, car off the engine's still running we're gonna throw some sea foam in the in the fuel tank this round and see if we can clean some of the carbon off the pistons and the valves and such we just broke down in the middle of traffic Sucks. Green light. <laughs> oh, you're going to bottom out. No, I'm not. That's fine. All right, let's, uh, let's fix that. Move it, buddy. Oh, did you just run over a pigeon? No, I think he moved. Well, that didn't go too smooth. We only made it about a mile or so, and at the traffic light sitting there getting hot, it ran out of fuel is what it felt like. But the first thing I did is hop out, pop the hood, and kink off our line that goes to the third nipple on the fuel filter. I mean, maybe it's not such a good idea to send that hot fuel back in to the filter where it's then being pumped back into the engine. Well, my guess as to what happened is the fuel started kind of boiling up here and sent it back down this hose into that third nipple and that's why it was just a horrible idea to put it down here. I don't know what I was thinking. nicer than the motel six smells amazing and there's a carpet which is not great for pets but yeah king bed wow 
We just got an alert that there's a dust storm headed our way. And look at these skies. Uh, looking a little dusty over there. Maybe fly the drone up real quick, see what it looks like. It's gonna be a dust storm. Oh my God, um, I think there's definitely a dust storm coming, guys. Oh, there goes my hat again. Oh man, it's going too. Look at it. It's halfway across the parking lot. Yeah. in these gusts. I mean, look at it go. I'm not doing anything. I'm just, it's just balancing itself out. Watch it. Jen's first ever hotel bar. Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. At least she says. I, I don't believe it. I, I think she's lying. Best bartender ever, Emma. Gasoline forever. Gasoline forever, man. Here, buddy, you can have a lemon. Yeah. She can, um. Oh, you don't like it. Guys, jump through. <laughs> Mommy, can I have one cookie, please? <laughs> Doing a little late night El Camino maintenance. We got the fuel system now rectified. Ditched the fuel filter down there, so now we've got a straight shot. Put it up here where I kind of should have put it to begin with. I was just trying to cut corners. And we ran this hose, the third nipple, as I was discussing earlier, to address the vapor lock issue. Ran that down yonder, uh, down to the hard line that I flushed out and out to the back where it runs into our fuel tank. So it's kind of like a return system now. And so when you shut the engine off and it builds up pressure on the uh, pressure side of the fuel pump, it's not going to push into the carburetor and flutter out. This is our new vent coming out of the cap. And uh, that has taken care of all vapor lock issues. And now just did a quick spit shine on the master cylinder, filled that with fresh fluid from the dollar store actually, CMJ Brothers, dot three slash four. Look, it's right behind you. Oh, there it goes. Ah! <laughs> Get it, guys, look, it's right there. Look, you missed it. <laughs> he says, that's my meal for the night. <laughs> A couple days later now, kind of just been hanging out at the hotel, doing some video editing and relaxing, and now we're getting ready to maybe hit the road again. So this is our going to town rig, as Derek would say, and I figure it's a good time to take a look at the valve train. Uh, we're gonna do a, a proper adjustment on these. <laughs> well, that's that's what I was thinking until I pulled this, this passenger side off and checked that out on number eight. The push rod is all the way, I can see it, it's all the way down there, but yeah, you know, that's, you know, rockers just kind of hanging out right there. Uh, and we got some major slop on this one. So I'm surprised we didn't do more damage to this driving it. We really should have addressed this before. But I was already fairly convinced it was gonna need the cam and lifters anyway, so I figured let's just make it down to Tucson. Oh, this is the bent push rod, look at that. I wonder if we did that or, uh, ooh, the bottom's gone too. <laughs> so that's floating around the engine somewhere. Oh, could be worse, right? Let's see what kind of damage we caused to this one. Oh, and she's a little mushroomed on the top, but the bottom's perfect and yeah, overall still usable. Well, we got our helper back out here and here's the attack plan. Got all eight spark plugs out, both valve covers off. And first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna get down on the crankshaft and ro rotate the engine bunch of times until each valve is at its highest lift and I'm gonna have Jen come in here with a straw and check that each valve is lifting the same amount check if we got any flattened out lobes really wish that I got a cheap dial indicator but you know we don't have that so we'll go with that method and then we're gonna do a valve adjustment and you see that one we cranked down the other day is all the way down this nut is bottomed out it's still I mean it's at zero lash but it doesn't have any preload on the plunger so that's either completely collapsed in or the cams just completely wiped out for the push rods O'Reilly's actually was able to get four of these within an hour and they're on the way delivering them right now which is great only three bucks a piece with free delivery can't beat that uh i grabbed four just because we know we already have two that are bad but i'll be checking the rest along the way it's, nope. mo it's moving yes but how will i know when it's tell me when it stops moving up so for it to stop moving up i have to see it move down now it's moving down i'm in reverse tell me when it stops moving up 
Got O'Reilly's right here, special delivery. Booyah. What's going on, man? Well, the ones we got are ball ends, but I don't think that really makes a difference. Uh, look at this. Look how much of this broken push rod is still in the engine. We should probably pull the intake off and check for that in there, but yeah, we'll just roll with it. And that method of checking the valve lift to see if the cam lobes are wiped out, that's not going to be accurate and take way too much time. So we'll just set this valve lash and see how she runs. For the valve adjustment, I just hand rotated the crankshaft until I felt compression on my finger in the spark plug hole. And then I rotated till we're top dead center on the, the crank mark. At this point, I can adjust both these valves. Currently, this one feels really tight and this guy, a little bit of, little bit of play. So I'm gonna back the uh, exhaust off and see what we're at. Half turn, one turn, still tight. So that valve was way, way over tightened. Let's go another half turn. All right, and now we're finally at zero lash. So that one was cranked down a turn and a half. Uh, so now that I have this down to zero lash, I can spin the push rod just a little bit and I don't have any up and down play. I'm gonna crank this nut down a half turn. It's a half turn of preload on the lifter plunger and that is adjusted. So I'm gonna do the same thing now on the intake side and then rotate the crank 90 degrees and that'll put it at top dead center on cylinder number eight. Your firing order is right here on the intake. 18436572. Uh, and you're gonna do 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, and follow that pattern and adjust each of the valves. So we'll get that done, see how it runs, and replace some push rods while we're at it. Chris has officially released me of my duties, so I'm gonna go take a dip in the pool. Can't wait. Check this place out. Got the place all to myself. So this is more than likely the last chance we have for any relaxation time before we hit the road tomorrow. Uh, so I am just soaking it in. Well, that was short-lived. Chris just sent me a text asking me to crank the engine over, so I'm gonna go help him out with that. It looks like he found someone else for the job. Uh, just crank it for like, I don't know, like, like till I tell you to stop, uh, so I get a good All right, and uh, go ahead whenever you're ready. All right, beautiful, thanks, man. The valves all look pretty good during that crank. Uh, I definitely found that these were way over tightened. Many of them were three and four turns tightened down on the plunger. The plunger came all the way up. Uh, so this might run pretty good now. And as you saw with the crank, that cam is certainly not completely wiped out if it does have any damage at all. But all back together, let's see how she sounds. Mm, much nicer crank now. But I still gotta fix that pumper. Embarrassingly enough, I never did find that big spring for the uh, pumper, so the pumper still doesn't work. Give it a little quick prime. I still gotta tighten that power steering belt, too. Yeah, listen to that. <laughs> Smooth running V8. I don't hear any misfires, no shaking. The exhaust sounds beautiful. I wonder if this will take care of the smoke out of the right pipe too since that valve wasn't opening as the piston's going down it probably or as it's going up it was probably wanting to pull vacuum from the crankcase and pull oil into the cylinder but we'll have to find out once it gets hot because it seems to just burn oil when it's hot man that sounds good so i'm wondering if whoever originally installed the cam and lifters uh you know again some of those were cranked down four turns after zero lash maybe that's what led to the collapse lifters and the, uh, the bent push rods and all that that kind of fiasco that was obviously already there before we dug into it. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty happy right now. It sounds so much better. I wish we would have done this to begin with, but you know, when you're on a time crunch and you're just rushing around trying to get somewhere, you just go with the bare minimum, but should have taken more time to begin with. And it turns out that new power steering belt is actually out of adjustment, so we're gonna have to get one size smaller. I guess we get the wrong size. Let's go see if Jen's still in the pool. They're like, oh, oh, there she is. Hey, baby. Hey. <laughs> she is running so much better now. Okay. You're going to be happy. That's right, Gus. We got a smooth running engine now. You want to go in the pool? Yeah. Let's do it. Going to the pool. So much better than working on cars. Oops. <laughs> Like before much smoother ah that belt though we got the, so the belt is too long and i can't tighten it anymore i'm a part store on the way to dinner man she's running good Woo! oh yeah what do you think baby 
Runs a little bit better than before. Do you agree? Yes. She doesn't even notice. She's I like, do notice. As long as it... He's like, nope, I'm too smart this time. <laughs> I know that trick. <laughs> Stopped over at one of the man-made lakes here in Phoenix. I don't know what it's called. I think it's called just the lake, the guy said. But it's all electric boats and, you know, so no water skiing or nothing like that. And it's, it's pretty darn small. It's not connected to anything, but... Take your stop into this place and get a lakeside brew. <laughs> What's on your face, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> Five star review for this place, big time. Super friendly and very well taken care of establishment yeah. here. And the adventure continues. We're gonna head up to Old Town Scottsdale and then back over to AJ, as you guys call it, Apache Junction. Uh, <clears throat> so we, we put up the part one video yesterday and thanks very much for all the positive feedback you guys have left and useful information. Like some of you guys were mentioning the uh, studs are notorious for pulling out on these old 350 heads since the, the rocker studs are actually pressed in instead of threaded in. I never knew that and it certainly could be the culprit uh, causing the valve train issues that we have. So we'll have to pop those valve covers off at a later time. Uh, but today I did want to address this rear suspension. So it's, it's squatting like really low in the back. And I remember reading the original ads said these came factory with air suspension. So I did, I wasn't looking at this before, but I did notice we got a couple airlines heading over to, I would presume, the shocks, and they run right over here. Never even saw it, but it does have air suspension in the rear. I'm gonna pump those up and see what it does for us, but we don't even have a gas tank or very much weight in the bed, and these are fully squatted down. There's only like a half inch between the bump stops. Uh, if that doesn't take care of it, we'll replace those worn out springs. Jen's gonna go ahead and hook the pump up. I set this up at 30 PSI, I was reading, you should fill these to anywhere from 20 up to 70 PSI. All right, it doesn't even sound like they're hooked up. And chasing these lines up, we do have a hole right here. Well, that would explain. Uh, I need some dikes, baby. Gus, <coughs> that's enough. Sorry, boy. Be out of here in no time. I'm just gonna move this. This little, uh, cut the hoses back and move this. I got a nice uh, headrest here. Neckrest. And tag strap. It's actually awesome. <laughs> I didn't even see that. I right, got it rigged up. Let's try it out. <laughs> oh, yeah. They work. Heck yeah. With the leaking sections cut out, that's holding 70 PSI now. It did bring it up maybe an inch and a half or two, but I think the springs that we'll still get some helpers or new springs at some point. Because we bottom out the hitch several times a day. And pause, wanna chime in here. Uh, gonna wrap this one up here. There is so much more to come on this El Camino trip as I'm sitting here in a hotel doing editing now and I'm just realizing there's no way to pack it into one video and, and still be able to put a video out every seven days. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoy this kind of thing and, and you know if you don't, let me know your feedback. If you do, what do you want to see more of or less of? Uh, there's a lot more repairs coming and just crazy fun travel stuff too. So as you might imagine, these kind of trips get very expensive too. And I know in the last one, there was you know, occasionally we put a sponsor in that really helps uh, finance a trip like this. So thanks very much to you guys for, for being uh, supportive of the channel, watching these videos and, and really, uh, all the feedback you guys leave, hugely appreciate it. See, this one over here keeps hitting record all the time. No, and, you! And so I end up with like 12 hours of footage. No, you have 12 hours of driving chop, scenes. Chop it all up. The El Camino adventures are going to continue in the next video, and we will see you then. All right. No nonsense, no hell. Jen and Gus, over out. Peace out.